Hey, my name is Frederick. In this video I will introduce you to formaldehyde regulations in the EU. So formaldehyde is a is an organic compound that is used to well it's 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 used or it exists as a byproduct in various forms um, when uh, manufacturing certain wooden products and and also uh, clothing textiles. So it can be found in a range of products. And high levels of formaldehyde can cause irritation uh, and also more severe conditions, which is why um, formaldehyde is, is regulated, meaning that uh, certain material should only must only contain um, formaldehyde up to a, a certain limit, but I'll get to, to that in a bit. So which product may contain formaldehyde? This is not a definitive list, but it gives you gives you an idea, okay? So plywood, uh, adhesives, insulation materials, textiles. It's common that testing companies include formaldehyde testing um, for, for textiles, food contact products, okay? Um, and also cosmetic and, and certain chemical products, shampoo, lotion, makeup, and so on. So is formaldehyde banned in the EU? It's not like, completely banned in the sense that the content must be always zero but it's restricted and in the case of reach for example you can see here that there's a set limit so 75 milligrams per kilo okay and reach also uh, references a uh, a testing method the thing with reach is it applies to all materials all products so for this reason you could say that Formaldehyde is essentially restricted for well, all products sold in, in the European Union. Okay, then we have the Toy Safety Directive. And you can see here that the limit is actually, like here it's 75. When it comes to toys, it's, it's even stricter. But it also depends on the material. Um, you see here textiles, leather, paper, 30 milligrams. If it's uh, water-based materials or solutions, 10 milligrams for some reason. I, I don't even know what. I guess maybe paint, made paint or something. Um, so basically, you can say that, as is the case with other substance regulations, the the reason this is covered, like, okay, you've got reach. Why, why even bother having it in a toy safety directive if it's already, if it already applies to everything? And as you see here, it's the reason is that the limits are stricter for certain products, age groups and materials. All right, then we have the cosmetics regulation. And once again, you see that there are limits that apply to specific types of products nail hardening products for some reason oral products i don't know why but that's how it is and then we have the fcm framework that's food contact materials okay food packaging or well anything else really here you can see that the limit is even even more strict now you're down to 15 milligrams okay and when it comes to kitchenwares imported from mainland China or from here, from Hong Kong, importers must also uh, present a declaration that states the conformity, okay? So it's a bit like the well, declaration of conformity, but concerning the release of formaldehyde, which in turn must be based on, on a lab test report. So basically, they're mandating um, uh, lab testing, even although, Lab testing is really the only way to, to verify if a product is compliant anyway. Okay? So, how do you know which tests you need for your product? Or basically, how do you know which limit applies to your product? Keep in mind that the limits in this video could already be outdated. Um, maybe it changed this afternoon, I don't know. Um, but as an importer manufacturer, you don't necessarily need to keep track of the specific limits that apply in right now or to your specific product. As long as you work with a legit and established testing company like Kima or Intertech or Eurofins, SGS, etc., etc., 
then they keep track of the limit for you. They need to know the material, the product name, the application, the age group. Based on this, they can say, okay, this is the limit. And then they, they do the test accordingly. You don't need to keep track of the specific limit as long as you work with a testing company. Now, how much does a formaldehyde test cost? Not that much. Uh, one, two hundred dollars, something like that. The thing is, though, that the regulations I just covered, REACH, Toy Safety Directive, etc., they don't just cover formaldehyde, okay? So you've got lead, phthalates, uh, BPA, it's a long list tests that you may need but the formaldehyde test alone is not necessarily that expensive all right thank you for watching this video if you want to learn more about compliance requirements in the us and the eu you can go to compliancegate.com tool